Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen where everything is scratch made and home preserved. I'm Jenny and this is Dovember put on by Linda over at Talilu Creates. Thank you so much Linda for inviting me. Uh, we did Dovember last year and it was a good time. There's so many good recipes to make with dough. Today I'm going to make an easy one. I need to get dinner rolls in my freezer. The, I'm just so I'm going to make the dough and I'm going to freeze it and I'm going to show you that part and also bread dough. Holidays are stressful and we have enough going on. I figure if I can get some things made ahead of time and into the freezer, that way I can just pull out my dinner rolls on Thanksgiving and let them rise and then bake them off. That would be perfect. And also for bread dough. So all through December, uh, when I need fresh bread with dinner, I'll have it already made. This is also great for gift giving if you want to do ahead of time, make the bread dough and then bake it off the day that you're going to give out fresh bread or bread baskets to your loved ones. Um, bread and homemade jam are a great gift item instead of a cookie basket. Those are great make-ahead things. So, freezing bread dough today. We're going to get started with my dinner rolls. I'm not going to show you the whole dinner roll recipe because I already have a video on that. I will link that in the description box below as well as the dinner roll recipe. I will show you how I make the bread. There are several channels participating in November. I will put their links in the description box below as well for you, as well as the playlist. You're going to want to go to everybody's channel and check out what they got going on for November. It's a lot of good stuff. There's already been a lot of good stuff. Okay, there's my timer for kneading my dough. Um, for the dinner rolls, again, I will link the the dinner roll recipe in the description box below for you as well as the video. I've done videos on these for you already. Um, I really just wanted to show you the step in which you freeze them because I've had lots of people ask. And this does make, make it a lot easier. That way you don't have to go buy like the Rhodes frozen dinner roll and cost you extra money if you've got the time to make it beforehand. And you don't want to have to run out and get King's Hawaiian rolls. Nothing against that if you like those, but again, it's an extra expense. So my dough has come together, shaping it into a ball. You can put it on the counter and knead it if you want to. I knead it right in here and then I just kind of shape it. And then I have my bowl that I've greased. I'm going to put it over here in my bowl. Move this to the sink. coated my entire dough ball with oil. I'm just going to cover it and put it in my oven with the light on it to rise for an hour and a half. So do the directions on whatever dinner rolls you prefer to make because you don't have to use my recipe. Any dinner roll recipe is fine to freeze. I'm going to put it right in my oven to rise. As I've got all my windows open today except this one, which I do now. So I don't want to draft. Okay, I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to get started on the bread. Next thing we're making is some Italian bread, but we're going to make it with Kalmata olives. So I've got half a cup of warm water in here. I am going to add one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast. To this, I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. I've got bread flour. I'm going to go ahead and pop in about three cups in here. And I want a teaspoon of salt, so here's some kosher salt. Put on my dough hook. And the last thing I want to, or one of the last things, 
I want to add in some dry malt powder. Dry malt powder is excellent to give your bread that crunchy outside and the crunchy chewy outside and the soft interior. So I am going to put a tablespoon of dry malt in. I use that for pizza crust as well. Beer, I pulled it out of the fridge and let it sit on the counter for a little while to get the chill off of it. One cup of beer, just use your favorite beer that's not brand specific. If you don't drink beer and you're totally against using alcohol, then use carbonated water because you want this carbonation in there, but beer gives things good flavor. It has a good yeasty flavor. Oh, I almost forgot my olives. I have a third of a cup of Kalmata olives, and I'm leaving them whole, but I'm going to drop them in right now and let them knead right in with the dough. So I'm going to stir this together, and then I'm going to let it knead for seven minutes. And I'm going to add a little bit more flour. I don't think that was quite three cups. It still looks pretty wet. You don't want to overly add flour. I know a lot of People will add it until it doesn't stick to the side of the bowl. By the time you've done that, your dough is no longer hydrated enough. It'll pull away from the bowl. Sometimes it sticks a little bit and that is okay. Don't add more flour than the recipe says, just to avoid sticking. This will be a, a holiday bread. So in the month of December, when we're having family dinners and get togethers or friends over with dinners, I can pull a loaf of bread out of the freezer and just let it come to room temperature and let it rise and then bake it off. And It'll take me a lot less time than doing this part. It just cuts out the step of making the dough. This bread is so good. You're going to love this recipe. Beer just gives it such a good flavor. I have my bowl greased. I'm just going to make my ball here. I just kind of knead it at the very end in the bowl. Make sure all my olives are inside here. This is a very hydrated dough. So it's a little stickier than your normal bread dough. Put this in the sink. Bread dough, okay, so my bowl is oiled and then I put it in there and flipped my dough so that the whole ball of dough is oiled. You don't want your dough to dry out. I'm going to go ahead and cover it and put it into the oven with my other bowl. An hour and a half. We're going to get started with the next loaf. I'm going to make several so that I can get them in the freezer and have them for the holidays. So if you don't normally buy beer and don't have it in your fridge, make sure that you get yourself a big one or a six pack because you need a cup of beer per recipe. So I'll have to grab another one out of the fridge because I think this is probably three quarters of a cup. While my bowl is soaking, the next one we're going to do is a sun-dried tomato and Asiago bread. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got sun-dried tomatoes cut in julienne strips. I'm going to go ahead and dice these a little bit smaller. Asiago cheese with rosemary. So rosemary is going to be a good flavor for Christmas. So it'll be sun-dried tomato and rosemary. Um, I can put extra rosemary in the bread too. I, I have dried. But I, if I had fresh, I would put fresh rosemary in here. And I'll probably, honestly, make this loaf. I'll bake it later on for you after it's frozen so I can show you how to do it. And then I'll replace it with one with fresh rosemary that I make. Okay, so I just want to rough chop on those a little bit. I'll probably take some of the oil that's in here and use a tablespoon of that also in my bread dough. I'm going to get this grated up. And I'll be back when I'm ready to start the bread. Okay, next recipe. It's going to be the same bread recipe, but we're flavoring it different. This one's, this bread recipe is nice because you can put whatever flavors you want into it. Um, in here I have my half a cup of warm water. I'm going to put my teaspoon and a half of yeast. Again, it only needs a teaspoon and a half because we're putting beer. Beer is yeasty. And we'll help it rise. And then my tablespoon of sugar. All right, it is time to refill the baking. The baking center. 
Okay, I'm gonna let this fluff up for just a minute. And we're gonna put three cups of flour in. An amount of bread flour and flour. I use I go through so much bread flour. I make bread every week. Teaspoon of salt. Tablespoon of dry malt powder, very important for the texture of the bread. This will change your bread game. We're going to put in our two tablespoons of oil, so I'm going to use a tablespoon of this oil. Because it has flavor in it. And then a tablespoon of my Sicilian olive oil. Down to the bottom of the bottom of the bottle here. I am going to go ahead and put in my tomatoes. And then at the last minute I have decided I am going to use some freeze-dried green onions. You don't have to. But I'm going to use uh, two tablespoons, and I'm just going to put them in dry. They will get mixed with all the stuff here, and I'm going to put in my beer, my cup of beer. This is a very well hydrated dough, so those will be fine. And then as soon as this comes into a dough ball, I'm going to go ahead and add my cheese and knead that in with it. At this point, I'm just hoping I got enough bread flour in here. Robert was supposed to bring this in the other day, and he forgot. If you've ever seen my pantry outside, we call it Goff Grocery Store. It's kind of the grocery store I've created out there. It has everything in it, and it's got five gallon buckets of flour and sugar out there. And then I bring, I have him bring those in and I fill my jars and rotate it through. I just don't think that's going to be enough. I'm going to have to use a little bit of my, whatever's left of my all purpose also. I end up using about three and a half cups of flour in this bread when I make it. I put three cups in first and add the last half a cup slowly. Sorry, you're way over there and can't see what's in here. Just kneading it into the bread dough. Here I have the Asiago cheese. One little piece didn't get grated. Okay. This is done. I had to take a break for a minute and peel potatoes for dinner. This bread dough smells so good. This one I ended up mixing with some whole wheat flour because I ran out of this flour. Okay, here's my beautiful bread dough. I'm going to put it in my oil bowl and flip it, make sure it's covered. Cover, I'm just gonna cover my bowl and because my oven is full, I'm gonna put it under my stove light. I'm cooking potatoes over here on the stove so it'll stay warm. Hour and a half on that. Um, at this stage, I was going to do another one, but you know what? I think you get the gist. All the recipes in the description box. I'll put all the recipe links in the description box below for you. Um, another one. 
I wanted to do is some cheddar jalapeno, but I just realized I have no jalapenos and I need to fill these, so. You can put whatever you want in your bread. That's the nice thing about making it yourself. What, what flavors do you like? Do you like green olives instead of kalmadas? Use those. Do you want to throw some Greek flavoring into your bread with kalmada? You could do that. You could put some oregano in there. You could put some lemon peel in there. You could put some uh, feta in there. You can do whatever you want, man. When these are done with their first rise, we're going to shape them and then we're going to freeze them, so I'll bring you back for that. All right, so you're going to need two grease pans that are freezable. This one I'm actually going to make for tonight and then I'm going to put the rest in the freezer. This is our beautiful dough for dinner rolls. In dinner rolls, I just kind of push it down in the bowl, pull them out in like golf ball size, and I stretch and pull and fold them inward each dinner roll. And then on the dry, dry counter, I don't use um, flour, so I don't want to incorporate any more flour into my dinner roll. I just kind of roll them like so, put them into my pan. I'm sure everybody has their own dinner roll technique if you make dinner rolls. Like I said, I'm going to bake off a couple in this pan for dinner tonight. I have a pot roast in the crock pot. So. I'm going to put about six in here just in case the boys come for dinner. In that case, maybe I better put eight. My oldest son stops by for dinner often, so I never know though for sure if he's coming by that day. So I always prepare just in case. Nothing makes me happier than feeding my babies. Okay, so I'm gonna take this little pan, I'm gonna stick it back in the oven for a minute, let it rise. Other than that, I have these freezer pans. These are stainless steel and then they have plastic covers to go over them. I absolutely love these as freezer meals are something that I do make regularly. These are great for casseroles, they're great for dinner rolls, breads, they are good for sheet pan dinners. Okay, so I just took my pan over there and greased it generously because it's going into the freezer. I am going to get these dinner rolls in there. I am also going to make one more batch of dinner rolls as dinner rolls go fast on Thanksgiving, anytime actually, but especially on Thanksgiving. Okay, so once you have all of your dinner rolls in here, now keep in mind I got to make another load of dinner rolls to put in here, but this top will go on and it's going to go into the freezer right away. I'm going to freeze this and then I'm going to pull it back out and add more dinner rolls to it, but obviously if you have a full load here and you didn't just do what I did, you just freeze your dinner rolls. And then on Thanksgiving, I'm going to pull these out, take this off, set them in my oven with the light on, cover them with a towel, and let them rise. If you are interested in these pans that are wonderful for freezer dinners or anything like this, um, they are in my kitchen must-have Amazon link. First dough, my first bread dough is done rising. This is the first rise. I'm going to punch it down. I'm going to shape it. So I'm going to pull it out. So here's the thing. You can do 
two loaves or you can do three loaves with this. I'm going to do two. I'm running out of room over here. So I'm just going to use my spatula and cut this into two. make these more like not big French loaf breads but more small ones so I'm just going to roll them long long ways this is a very hydrated dough so it's sticky I'm gonna pick this up put it here Finish shaping my dough on my thing here. But all I do is kind of pull and fold in. And then I'm gonna pinch the ends, make them a little bit. So however you however you like to shape your baguettes. I'm gonna stick these in the freezer. Actually, I'm going to do the same thing with this one here. And this is the cheese and sun-dried tomato. Oops. So I'm going to pull and tuck in. take a sharp knife and make little cuts. I'll do it now so that I don't have to do it, remember to do it when I pull them out of the freezer. And I'm going to do them just kind of diagonal. I'm going to take this and put it in the freezer just like this. As soon as they're completely frozen, we'll package them up. So again, here, this is what they look like right now. I'm going into the freezer. Okay, once your bread dough is frozen solid, we need to package it up for the freezer. So I am going to use my food saver and I'm going to use the cut your own bag. Okay, so I am doing olive bread first. You can use Ziploc freezer bags if you can find big enough ones for, to fit your loaves of bread. But I find the make your own bag much easier. Alright, now I'm going to vacuum seal this. Okay, vacuum sealed perfectly, olive bread dough. And then this will just go into the freezer. Okay, so I made four, but I'm baking one frozen loaf off for you. And then these are going into the freezer. 
for the holidays. These will be nice for um, Christmas hors d'oeuvres, canapes. Okay, so I did bake off one loaf for you and I put it in my outside oven, completely forgot about it, overcooked it, forgot to set a timer. That's what happens when you get too many things going on at once. So I did not show that part, but I wanted to end this video thanking you for watching and make sure that you do go check out all the other channels in November because you are going to get a ton of good dough recipes. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.